what, what <laughs> could you, what other um, disciplines or other um, sector can be included in your uh, analysis to complement it? Of course, uh, I realized that water was absent from my analysis. Uh, in, in fact, I, I assume that uh, the effect of nitrogen, because all of my scenarios and my analysis are, are based on the response of yield to nitrogen input, I assume that the response curve is at constant water availability. And I ignore completely the, the, the lever of more or less water, more water by irrigation, less water by climate change. And, and that's uh, a blind point, maybe, of these scenarios, so the, the effect of water. So um, I didn't learn that, but I, I realized that very, very, very clearly by your uh, I also realized uh, just uh, this afternoon that uh, the transition from uh, international food regime two to international food regime three uh, was so evident in terms of governance, <laughs> and uh, it was an incredibly uh, pessimistic view that. Uh, have uh, showed us, uh, which really question lots of uh, question the possibility, in fact, of changing systems much more than biophysical issues. Thanks. Other want to answer? Thank you. I. I think more or less the same of Gilles, but uh, yeah. from the reverse uh, point of view. And uh, in fact, uh, from our point of view, what it is missing and uh, what can complement our, our analysis is uh, the, nitrogen, <laughs> the nitrogen part. And uh, in fact, then we can discuss about it, but uh, we carried out an analysis very similar to what uh, Jill uh, presented, but from the water point water. of view. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we obtained results very, very similar. So we applied the, the Lancet uh, diet at global scale, but more or less the results are the same you show for, for Europe. And what we discovered was that is that uh, uh, by by considering this diet uh, we can save uh, natural resources so uh, it, and it is uh, very very important because uh, we save a lot of land a lot of water and so it is possible to uh, cultivate land in a way that it is uh, less impactful for uh, for the planet and then uh, I think that uh, it is uh, necessary to complement uh, our, um, our res resource, uh, considering also um, the economy, and so uh, uh, the scientists uh, study economy, and of course the social, uh, social scientists, and uh, in particular water governance people, uh, because we are uh, uh, water scientists, and uh, we are the governance uh, for us. We, we are more biophysical water scientists, and uh, we and uh, we we don't have competence uh, on uh, on water governance. In fact, usually we have colleagues uh, we work working with uh, that uh, help us uh, in this uh, very big, uh, very in this very important uh, issue. Um, I mean, it, it's become really clear from the discussion that. And it was part of the discussion of after my presentation that the impact of prices of food and the market mechanisms are, are not yet well understood. And I think that is really important. I would say I'm not familiar at all with the economics of this food waste, of the waste topic. I, I think the literature also has just begun to, to, to tackle these issues. Whereas in the past, it's been a lot about accounting and knowing how much and how to measure and who is involved. So now we take another step to more the economics and markets. Um, 
this is not a field I'm familiar with, so I shouldn't mm -hmm. highlight that it would be important. But um, yeah, hearing Eve talking about the political science view on how the arrangements and the policies, I mean, I really think that the food loss and waste and the definition part could be an interesting um, case study um, because I have a little bit been part of discussions, I mean, uh, as a scientist in, 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 pro in, in a research project and also in the French um, government policy debate. Uh, and, and I thought that the, the, the business stakeholders really played an important part and they managed, and I observed the, this as a complete, um, I mean, beginner, and, and I have no um, analytical framework to really understand, but I thought, well, <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> it's in their hands, and they manage, I mean, with the policy results we have. Um, I thought that would be an interesting complement to what we, we can do about it. No. But uh, there is one thing, so that I, uh, if you remember, I was talking about some point uh, of uh, different ways of looking at water, one of them was uh, really as a commodity. And then this, uh, listening to Eva's talk, there is, uh, and we were a couple of weeks ago, we were at uh, the UN conference on water in uh, New York, and uh, the, on the stage were brought really, uh, at the very end, almost closing notes, uh, the buyer, uh, one from the buyer, and uh, um, we should all now also Monsanto, so the, the big agri chemical uh, corporation. So I think uh, I was, um, um, yeah, there are some forces behind uh, this. Uh, um, and again, one of the messages in the same statement uh, were acknowledging that uh, the water is a public good, but then they were. Uh, invoking the intervention of uh, in the involvement of the private sector, going back in the direction of the neoliberalism approaches of how we find the resource. So I think a better connection, try to connect the dots al along these lines uh, about these uh, uh, policies and politics uh, that uh, uh, in the, the forces that uh, are uh, uh, driving some uh, uh, pushes for uh, uh, the commodification of water. I don't know if I'm making sense, but this is, uh, I think this is would be very always very important to uh, place it in the context uh, of these larger uh, drivers that are behind the yeah the way we look at resources and uh, we handle them. Well, uh, I might say I, I'm always very keen to um, to to discover uh, how biophysical science uh, present things and and uh, how it works, actually. Uh, for instance, learning about the uh, techniques uh, of irrigation and, and um, or, or how uh, nitrogen inputs are, are measured and, uh, and how waste are dealt with. I think it's, uh, at least for a social scientist, it's very important to be ab able, at least try to understand uh, technically how things uh, work and also from a scientific point of view, how um, the um, debates go in other disciplines, uh, because I'm sure there are debates on how uh, on how to, uh, to to promote irrigation or better efficiency in irrigation, and, and certainly the debate uh, evolves uh, uh, on the um, on, uh, upon time, and it's the same for waste and and all these technical things. I think it's it's very it's uh, it's like I it's why I as a political scientist I like to work with the SPS people because they are sociologists specialized at looking at how science um, build uh, their, their, their ideas and, and their, their innovation and their reflection. And so uh, I'm, I'm always very um, happy to, to have a technical um, presentation uh, made and, and try to understand better things. But, uh, and, and I think there is really uh, a, a huge potential in, 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 in exchanges among disciplines yes. uh, around concrete projects. Really, I think it's really the key. We must not stay in only one discipline. It's yeah. not really, really we get around. I have not that much to add. Uh, clearly, uh, the presentation was mostly related to water, and so soon there can be the also the other input uh, that I say I focus on water, but the other input can be as important as well. So fertilizer and nitrogen, for sure, can be one side, and by the other, I totally agree with the fact that at the end we analyze uh, the. Uh, technical and geophysical aspects related to possible changes 
and we try to describe and to analyze the reality that we observe. So by one side, we try to include the, this social and economic aspect in our analysis. By the other, we have also to see how then make changes, try to see how it's possible to, to include uh, and to, to make these changes possible. So by one side to analyze, by the other try to improve the current situation. But uh, no, no. what I want to say <laughs> is that probably what we really need is uh, to educate, to inform policy makers, politicians, because uh, they need uh, to understand uh, the role of environment, the role of natural resources, and the need they have of uh, the knowledge of uh, the scientists uh, and of the transdisciplinary work of scientists coming from different disciplines. This is probably, this is the, in my opinion, it's uh, the most important thing to educate uh, uh, policymakers uh, to understand this. And it is very difficult. <laughs> I'm not so positive. <laughs> <in this. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Now, I wanted to say only one thing, that uh, uh, now we have all knowledge that we can be more interdisciplinary, but I think everybody here, in the, at least uh, maybe uh, I think everybody in this room are already much more interdisciplinary than what scholars used to be 20 years ago. I've been uh, in the interdisciplinary department uh, for the last 25 years, and I've been interacting with social scientists, with the political scientists, also with the uh, biologists, with physicists, and with the people from other disciplines almost all my life, and I think all of us have this uh, type of, uh, they, this is to say that the academic community has become much more interdisciplinary. We should also look, or transdisciplinary, or multidisciplinary, whatever you want, but uh, if you look back uh, where we were uh, 20 years ago, I think there's been much work already done along this uh, direction. Yeah. So, so the, the first uh, question is uh, how to articulate local and global. It means uh, we, we spoke a lot, about the global system, the analysis presented were uh, global, but from the global uh, to be translated into concrete action, we, we have to go to the local. And same as uh, the information goes from the local to, to the global. The, there is an exchange among these two. So in terms scales. of recommendation or in terms of? In terms of, of uh, recommendation, in terms of uh, analysis, w w the point of view you, you prefer. Uh, the second is, uh, um, so this is a, I don't know, philosophical question. Is uh, territorialization the, op the opposite, an opposite paradigm of global food system? Or we can uh, have uh, a different paradigm of global food system. It means that so we, we maybe we have the tendency to underline the negative aspect of global system, global food system, but there are also positive ones, and the positive ones can make can be made more sustainable. So this is another open question. If um, what there are the positive aspects? Let's discuss it. <laughs> But, but also you, you can disagree, huh? you can say no, territorialization can be the, the answer, or, but this is the, the debate. Uh, and the third way, I think we, we, we already jumped into that. So how to promote the dialogue between science and policy for a global food system, or between different disciplines? Um, so how, how can we boost? the transdisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, uh, which uh, if we need uh, different uh, funding schemes for, for, uh, for projects, uh, different uh, methods, we need to consider methods. Uh, also considering that uh, there are scientists, there are also uh, private actors, uh, policy people, so I just leave it up to you to, to pick the aspects you, you want and uh, yeah. Well, the third, the third question. I think that uh, probably uh, from, uh, I'm talking from an academic point of view, uh, we discussed together this morning in the, in the, in the metro line. 
probably uh, it's the time to to group people uh, not uh, uh, pay attention to the discipline but pay attention to the question that we need to answer so we have to group people for answering to a specific question up to now especially I'm talking about Italy of course but uh, people uh, uh, in the academia is grouped by discipline so mm -hmm. I am, am grouped with people that is hydrologist because I'm a water scientist but now I think it is the time to change this because uh, we have uh, uh, challenges that needs for the answer or for the uh, for the uh, not solved but uh, okay studied or analyzed they need uh, many disciplines uh, not just one to be addressed this uh, this uh, these challenges we have and so it's the time to change the paradigm and uh, this is my opinion um, and we can take for instance the IPC has uh, well written, really, um, it's, it's a, a huge work, but at the end, uh, what policymakers have is like um, a small paper, a sort of summary, and I think it's, from my point of view, it's deceptive, and it masks a huge, um, um, I don't know, huge uh, problems to tackle, so how do you see that, because even if, if you have a um, transdisciplinary group, finally I was sure that uh, your work will be well understood by, uh, by uh, non-scientists, uh, uh, policy makers, um, the IG, you the IG will, uh, and you the IG um, dispense, uh, I don't know. <laughs> For sure we are not sure <laughs> <laughs> where we write uh, the policy brief or we write uh, the report in general because uh, of course uh, even uh, how to write it is different uh, the, the, the words you have to use for uh, a general public uh, rather than for uh, a sci sci scientist and uh, this is why before I said that probably we need uh, to we need an education uh, uh, of uh, policy makers uh, or politicians uh, regarding science in general and of course we, we, we study environment and the environmental issues in particular because we need uh, to, to dialogue with, uh, with the, the people and so we need that uh, they understand us but also we need to understand them because of course if uh, they, they talk to me with their language probably I have problems uh, to understand what they really want to tell me and what they really want to achieve. So it's uh, by univocal from the two directions uh, what, uh, what uh, This question is to Madame Ewan. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So ma'am, uh, in today's world, in um, global geopolitical scenario. What do you feel that actually is happening on ground? Okay, scientific community one side, we have our own, um, uh, we study the climate, we study everything, and we have our own strong theory basis, everything put aside. But do you really think, is it really helping, uh, like at the time of making policies, or is it just influence of those couple of few power firms that you probably talked about? they are like influencing the decisions of all the firms or like scientific community probably one or two bullet points are being given to like for example these days uh, climate change is a hot topic and we know the severity the scientific community at least they are very sure and they know the severity of it they have predictions and everything but do you really think it is being taken or it would be taken at a global political or economic scenario uh, specifically when um, interest of let us say uh, the oil and gas industry or you know those big toes are at loggerheads with what the actual earth, earth is heading towards too. 
it is like at the overhead with their uh, interests, uh, with their money making mechanism. So what do you think is actually happening in, uh, are you getting my question? What I'm trying to say is like, is the scientific thing being paid heed to or is it like the major influences still from these big firms, ultimately, at the time of decision making, policy making? I don't know, what do you think? I think uh, we, if, uh, if uh, science results and science consensus on uh, uh, the climate change or on biodiversity uh, decline, uh, would be taken into account, we would knew it, uh, we would know it and, it and policy would change. So for sure, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, science has absolutely no effect and scientific consensus has absolutely no effect on policy making. And uh, that's for sure because uh, the policy makers uh, will not take a better decision if they are better informed because this is, the, I mean, the, 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 the level of, uh, uh, of Proof of uh, with which they are fed is not the explaining variable of their decision. The decision that are taken on other uh, basis, uh, uh, be it uh, the pressure by uh, citizens or be it uh, the, the the length uh, uh, for them staying at the at, at the power. So I I don't think there is a direct link between the state of the knowledge, scientific knowledge, and the decision taken. So I think it's very much a question of a democratic uh, equilibria and, and power relations. So no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I don't think, but I think my colleagues would uh, totally agree with this fact. Uh, we have no impact on decision maker at the moment. But uh, if I, I jump on the occasion to, to refer to one of these questions, uh, I would refer it rather to the first one. Uh, uh, I think it's different to, to approach this question um, uh, from an analytical point of view uh, or from an action point of view. And from an analytical point of view, um, I think it's very, very, um, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, misleading to want to look at uh, global things too globally. Uh, for many things that, uh, uh, for, for instance, there is a, a, a fashion at the moment for global agronomy. And go global economy, they, they, they calculate uh, global yields and global, uh, all things at the global level, uh, whereas in, it doesn't correspond to any reality, concrete reality uh, on the ground. So you can, uh, that is how you end up with uh, saying that we have to feed the, the world uh, by increasing the food production because uh, people are, are more and more and then we have to feed the, uh, to we, yes, we have to produce more. So it's, I think it's very dangerous to use this global scale uh, without a very critical uh, caution. Uh, so, uh, so and, and in terms of, of action, of course we have to, to think globally and act locally and to, uh, and there, there are, in, there's an importance in global decision. For instance, if, uh, if uh, soy is, uh, is so much present uh, uh, on, on, on European markets for animals to start for instance, it's uh, related to an old decision in uh, back in, uh, in the uh, general agreement on tariffs and trade in 1962, uh, Kennedy round, where uh, the, uh, well, uh, because we were organizing the common agricultural policy, the United States uh, have made some pressure uh, and bargaining negotiation to uh, set a zero tariff on, uh, fee on uh, what they call the substitution, a uh, zero substitution product. And, and this, at the moment, in, in 1962, had no, uh, absolutely no consequence on the European market because there was no intens intensive uh, livestock. But uh, this is how uh, uh, pox have developed in Brittany because uh, this feedstuff was coming with zero uh, levy, levy uh, zero tax mm -hmm. on the on the European market, and then it artificially this political decision, which was absolutely invisible and and very uh, side uh, uh, on the side, has had dramatic transforming effect on European agriculture. So uh, so so global global decisions may have very important local uh, effects. So we must be careful of what happens. But in terms of analysis and in research, I think it's sometimes very, very dangerous to keep uh, trying to look only at the global level without uh, 
taking into consideration the very big discrepancy on the ground. I mean, agriculture in Africa has nothing to do with agriculture in Brittany, and it's difficult to make equivalences. This is the answer. Oh, sorry. No, it's, it's on the same line. I think uh, at the same time, it's important to, I see the value of looking at global when the, we are dealing with a global problem. Like, for example, climate is a global problem. Of course, uh, the global goes by local action, etc. So there are, uh, uh, global is, uh, is tricky because it's very hard to have a global policy. That's probably the hardest part. But uh, uh, for example, going back to this thing of, uh, uh, Knowing that uh, consumer behavior in one place uh, affects uh, demand for feed and deforestation on the other side of the world. Uh, knowing that there are this sort of uh, displacement of externalities and of uh, impacts, I think that's important. Knowing that we depend on water resources that exist somewhere else, and then the water depletion in, in this place. So I think uh, it's important to realize that, that there are this, uh, this uh, uh, large, uh, that goes beyond our backyard uh, to the global scale. And then this is a, can be maybe what you define as analytical to understand uh, the problem. Then I don't know how the solution can happen if it happens more easily at the global or local scale. Yeah. And then, yeah, I totally agree. And then uh, now also data at global scale are becoming uh, more, uh, and more available and so uh, we are able to have uh, really the data at uh, sometimes at one kilometer resolution and so uh, for example the agricultural <coughs> yield uh, at global scale is not an agricultural yield uh, that uh, is a representative of uh, the planet but it is representative of uh, the, the, the grid one kilometer for one kilometer of course uh, it's not a farm scale, but in any case, the science is uh, going uh, step by step ahead. And so I totally agree that uh, it's very different uh, the, the answer that can, gi that can give a global analysis from a local analysis. But some answer given at uh, global analysis can be, can be important uh, also in order to make a more detailed analysis uh, at local scale. So nesting uh, as other analysis uh, uh, that are proper uh, of the scale uh, we are dealing with. And I just want to add that what we present for sure, especially in this presentation, are all analysis at the global scale, but we have a uh, few projects uh, where uh, we try to analyze uh, different scale with the same problem, to see also the possibility to switch from one scale to another. So moving to really localized problem that are addressed also with the involvement of the stakeholder that are there, try to see which is their own idea, which are the possibility or possible solution that they propose, and to see how modeling this solution can help uh, improving or not uh, their situation and we try to see this at the basin scale, at the country scale, or even in this case is a Mediterranean uh, area. So in any case, uh, what we try to see modeling is also the different scale and to see how an approach can move from this local scale into a larger scale and how to see solution at the larger scale can also be then replicated in all the smaller scale. question which relates a little bit to the second question. Uh, is it clear for you that the negative aspect of globalization outweighs the positive one? Because uh, I think it's, sorry, it's quite, it's a little bit uh, what I would take from, from the, the presentation of today. And uh, I wanted to, to do some uh, kind of pull among you to see uh, whether, so what are your point of view of it seems that there is you seem to be a negative view of, of globalization and is it really clear for, for you that it's uh, the, the negative aspect out, outweighs the positive one? 
<laughs> it seems so, but uh, I just wanted to. Yes, for me clearly. Uh, I, that, that, uh, my question to yes, the book yes. was really sincere. Yes. Which advantage do you see to the process of globalization? No, it's a, it's a stupid. Price. Sorry? Lower price. Lower food price. Lower price. What, what does that mean? Uh, lower price for who? For people. For people, for, for the, the buyers, for, 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 the, for the rich consumers, rich for or, or at least the, the consumers of the rich countries. Uh, but no, really, for, for me, so the price is, is really so just, uh, the, the price is, is just the uh, reflection of, uh, of uh, our uh, competition. It, that is the only thing. If you want, if price reflected uh, really the, the value, uh, what is the value? <laughs> is, is it, well, how do, would you define the, the value? Let me put price aside. What is the value of some of a uh, commodity, of, uh, of a kilo of uh, cereals, of a, or a baguette of bread? What is the value of it? Is it is it just the work that several people put in it for, for making it available? Is it the water necessary for producing it? And the nitrogen necessary for, for fertilizing the field? Uh, is it, I don't know, is it the, the area of uh, plant uh, that is necessary for producing it. What is the value? How do you define it? Instead, the price is just the result of negotiation between actors uh, with the, the, the volunty of each of them to get the more profit out of it. And okay, the strongest win and take the, the most important part of the, of, of the cake. But, uh, Price does not reflect value, and value is very difficult to define. So that's why I prefer to make a contability of nitrogen kilograms, because this is a resource. <laughs> you, you, you pay in dollars, you don't pay in nitrogen. Okay, but in, in euro, in in euro yes. yes. Uh, right, because uh, I live in this society organized in this way with uh, uh, the force of the rapport de force. How do you say that? In power, power relation. Power relation. Uh, uh, that that okay that forced you to, to be at your place and to, to get your part of the cake. But uh, how the, the part of the cake of each of us is defined is not the result of uh, it is the result of st of struggles um, between actors, and that's all. And that's the state of affairs. So, as a bioeconomist, I cannot do anything with price except thinking that it reflects the way uh, the actors are struggling against each other. But as a biochemist, I can say uh, the impact of this baguette of bread uh, on the environment is that and that and that. And you could have produced the same bread with lower impact on the environment. That I can say. But don't, don't ask me to comment about <laughs> just, I, I think even economists would not say that globalization uh, is producing uh, uh, by a lower price for every all consumers. On the, on our, uh, first, uh, it's no, it's not. It's yes for certain consumer perhaps, and certainly the rich consumer in the European Union. Uh, but uh, 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 so even uh, not chemists. Chemist, uh, not a uh, nitro chemist first, but uh, also economists would not agree on this. And and uh, the other side is that uh, if you internalize all the costs, uh, the one who's a classical in economics, I'm not an economist, I'm, I'm not anymore an economist, but uh, if you internalize the cost, environmental cost, health cost of the, the current food system, uh, you end up with a real crisis would be enormous. I mean, the budget spent for depolluting water, uh, for um, 
for uh, if we if we if we for instance due to uh, uh, pollution by uh, pesticides we lose uh, bees and uh, pollinators uh, we will not be able to uh, anymore to produce any agricultural product if you, we have if we miss this uh, fundamental function so it not only it does not produce by a uh, lower price for everybody this is absolutely a myth and, and but in, in but it also produces by increasing costs uh, uh, for, 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 for everybody. So we close the border? Sorry? So we, we need to close the border? Or so we need to go to No, but also, it also depends what and what. It's, uh, I'm back to the, this question of uh, farming models. I mean, and, uh, and food system uh, structure. Uh, what do you uh, exchange? Uh, I'm, 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 I don't think it's possible not to trade anymore at all. But what do you trade? Again, if you trade biofuels, uh, which deforest in South Asia, or you trade animal stuff, uh, feed stuff, uh, or you trade, uh, as France, only cheese and wines for rich uh, consumers in the world, uh, is it worth? Right, my uh, question is, is, is there something that is good to trade? <laughs> I think, at least I understand your For instance, yeah. in, the, in the scenarios, uh, which in, in some agroecological scenarios, uh, uh, just a little bit, uh, just the same kind as the one uh, Gilles has proposed, uh, one which has been developed by Idri, which is called TIFA. Uh, my, my, my question was, is, is there only negative thing in globalization? I agree with you that there is negative thing, but uh, is there only negative thing? I would rather ask you the question, what kind of positive things do you see in it? Uh, I, I agree with you, I'm not uh, very sure uh, of the coherence of uh, this dichotomy between global and local, uh, because uh, well, starting because globalization has a long history and uh, long distance trade started even before uh, colonization. And just to mention one positive as aspect of uh, globalization is that we can drink coffee and uh, eat uh, chocolate. So there is not only the, pri the price question, but also the diversity of the of the food, food that we have, the, the, the availability. And uh, so now we, uh, I, I really struggle to understand the pertinence between this local versus global uh, opposition because there are local dynamics that are uh, that rely on the globalized uh, load just for example uh, I don't know if organic agriculture in a territory depends on the manner of livestock but this livestock depends on the feed imported uh, from Latin America then I don't know there it's a very tricky question and I feel like today First century, it's not very uh, pertinent to oppose local and global because both are uh, very uh, linked, interlinked, and we cannot really separate. We cannot really distinguish what is 100% local and 100% Because to be serious, uh, the question is not to close the borders, uh, to, to suppress all international trade. Yeah, that's irrealistic and not, not serious. Uh, but the question is, is uh, the, the objective of the next decision of the next uh, policy to increase globalization, to increase interdependency to increase uh, global trade. And my, my response is certainly not. The objective should be to reduce it as far as possible. Even if the, in the scenarios I, I showed you, uh, some international trade would be necessary. Uh, it's true that the, 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 uh, the repartition, the, the international repartition of population on the one hand and resources on the other is such that uh, that there are countries that will still uh, 
be forced to import part of their food and, and some countries have the possibility to export some of their surplus. That, that, will, that will be the case. But the objective should not to increase more and more uh, this international trade. And that changed a lot the state of affairs. about the positive aspect uh, if you consider the virtual water trade uh, thanks to the virtual water trade uh, it has been and it is possible uh, to feed uh, a population living in a very water scarce region because they do not have water for growing crops and so it is thanks to the import export to the international market that it is possible uh, exporting uh, uh, food, uh, you virtually export the water that they don't give, uh, they don't have physically, mm -hmm. but they can have uh, by exporting and so importing food. This is uh, one of, uh, of some positive aspects of globalization. Do you want to I wanted to say about the same thing. So some regions of the world are too dry to, to produce the food that, that uh, would be required. So that, that could be a positive uh, aspect. But uh, this becomes a double uh, edged sword because of that uh, there is an increasing reliance uh, on, on, and this is the problem that we apply in general to the food system. It's so globalized that uh, we cannot really close the trade, right? Mm -hmm. we, there is some uh, uh, dependence. But I agree with the idea that the reducing or trying to think uh, of a food system or dream of a food system, and then I don't know how we become uh, real, that uh, at least where there is a decreased reliance of uh, trade would be important because where we saw that, that there have been a food crisis uh, and the uh, countries that uh, were exporting were having um, export, uh, reduced their exports and this caused uh, uh, cause a big uh, uh, turmoil around the world. Uh, so there is, uh, um, there are negative aspects of trade that people don't control the food that they rely on. The other th thing is, uh, we obviously refer to the notion of environmental stewardship. Uh, you're a steward of the environment uh, only if uh, your com decisions affect your backyard. It's very hard to feel sensitive to whatever happens on the other side of the world. You don't know what is happening. I was talking about deforestation before. You don't know what are the environmental impacts of, of uh, the, the supply chain that uh, uh, we rely, we, we depend on. I think that the very important uh, thing is to keep in mind that the fact that we rely so much on trade is directly connected to the fact that we rely so much on uh, industrial farming. And uh, as soon as you uh, you, you get rid of the dependency on chemistry, uh, we, the, the, the system will re-territorialize re re automatically. So these are two problematics that we must have always, uh, approach always jointly. I think, and this is why interdisciplinarity is so important, because it, we must keep the two sides of the problem together. I really think the, the way forward is there. Of course, the carrying capacity, if uh, we do not consider the trade, the, ter the carrying capacity of a certain place uh, decrease, of course, because uh, the possibility to sustain people decrease if you don't consider trade, especially if it is an importer. Uh, but if we will be able to change our uh, diet, for example, and so eating uh, less uh, natural uh, resources demanding food, probably we could also uh, adjust, increase the carrying capacity in terms of people that can be fed by, by with respect to the people that it is sustained now. Well, I in relation to, to the diet. I, I was also wondering when I was listening to Barbara, if we eat uh, something bad and I get uh, sick for that, so what I eat is a waste of food. Uh, so if what I eat is not uh, healthy, can it be considered like a sort of waste or um, 
because actually it's the same mechanism. It, it creates uh, a negative uh, social externality. Um, yeah. So what is the, the the link with the, the consumer side? The, the, the point is that uh, consumers don't only eat for health reasons and maybe yeah. one among many other determinants in food choices. <coughs> but I think that um, what is very important for the future is to suggest, and, and we as scientists can have a, a, a role to play, um, possible futures and contribute to narratives of desirable futures by showing what is possible, for example, biophysically, by revealing um, power relationships, by, yeah, I mean, adding insights, but in a way, um, yeah, opening perspectives for desirable futures. Um, and I think health is one of, yeah. <laughs>